Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Timberborn and welcome back to the Iron Isles. Things have drastically improved since the last episode. You can sort of see in the foreground here and a little bit off the distance on the left side of your screen that we do, in fact, have maple trees growing. We're sitting around 600 logs across the entire colony and that number is continuing to go up. So hopefully today we can do a decent bit of construction and hopefully we can make a whole bunch more golems as well. And to be honest, looking at all of these maple trees popping up, I have a feeling it's going to take a while for those to get harvested, which is completely fine by me. I'm actually going to go ahead and mark all of these chestnut trees to be removed as well as these pine trees. And I'm going to do the same with these ones as well. Yes, we could harvest those, but I kind of just want to replace all of these with maple trees because at this point we might as well. These maple trees are going to serve us so well across the entire colony. It's going to make construction so much easier and so much more possible than it was last time as well. Now, speaking of last time, there have been a couple of changes since that last episode. I've let time pass just a little bit so that we can get some construction going down here. But I've also started building a little something something here. It's nothing too fancy. It is just a water dump. It's going to be for irrigation so that we can come over here and plant a bunch of trees and have more trees in District 3. And I've done the same down here with a little path so that we can start to work on this chunk of land as well. And I actually checked with the district to make sure that we could get around here and we absolutely can. So basically, I'm going to put a forester down here and I'm going to have foresters over here and lumberjacks and all that good stuff so that we have really nice coverage. We just don't need lumberjacks right now. So what I think I'll do is go ahead and see what we can do for foresters. So if we get one right about here this one could potentially overlap with this island which i don't hate the idea of doing if i put a forester right here that coverage is pretty good right there is pretty good right there is almost the entire island there's actually if you look at it there's nowhere i can put a forester that covers this entire island annoyingly so i think actually right there is going to be the best spot because this guy can cover this half of the island and some of this land once the connection's made and then I can build one here and this guy can cover the other half of the island and probably a little bit over here as well. So I think I think that's the simplest way to do it. We'll do that kind of setup and we'll also get some stairs right here. We'll get some stairs right here and that's going to give them access to that upper space where they can, you know, go and get a bunch of trees. I think what I'll also do is just get a couple of lumberjacks just there and there as well. Obviously, they're going to have nothing to do for a while, but I'll just pause the buildings and everything will be okay. And I guess now the only thing left to do is go and plant more maple trees because that is that's basically the only tree we're going to have here. So we'll plant them down there. We'll plant them up here and we'll let those get built. I'm not really in any major rush to do it, although I would like to go ahead and start marking a bunch of this space to be chopped down so we'll mark this as a tree cutting area i guess we'll mark all of this as a tree cutting area all of this is a tree cutting area and basically everything on this island is going to be a bit of a tree cutting area so that we can take everything down we'll do the same on the upper level as well to about that spot i think and we can probably clear out the rest of it as well. I don't know if we're ever going to actually go up there, but we'll mark it anyway so that if we do end up with connections, we can totally get there and actually chop it down. And also, we have just finished the floodgates here. So water doesn't pass through here at all anymore. So hopefully that's going to slowly start leading towards us maybe having higher water levels in here. I don't know if it really will, but... I mean, I guess it is still flowing through there, so it's going to be a little bit of time before we really see some results on that, but it's fine. It's it's totally okay. Uh, we also have this running, which is fantastic, although we do need a golem to work in that particular engine, but that's going to mean that golems in this island don't have to cross the entire colony for a recharge, which is fantastic. So they can just keep working, which is exactly what I want them doing. 
Now, something I am starting to notice is that more and more golems are breaking down. And because of that, we're starting to see some jobs pop up for golems in and around District 1. Now, I've seen that a couple of times in District 3 as well. I've seen golem number 2, 3, and 4 break down. Golem 5 just broke down, and that's a golem that was in District 1. So, I think we probably do want to get this factory going as soon as possible. Now, we actually haven't unlocked the ability for this place to be worked by golems. It's 5,000 science to do it. We have 7,500, so I will unlock that, and we will set these guys up to be worked by golems, because we just should. Uh, that is also most likely going to give us a pretty good supply of golem parts, which is fine by me, I guess. I wasn't really expecting to have this factory up and running, but I do want to make sure that we stay on top of the golems. And the thing is, making golems requires resources. Keeping golems doesn't. I mean, it does technically. We have to recharge them. But as long as we have the infrastructure to charge them, really keeping golems is fine. And also stopping the production of golems is easy. We just turn off the two engines and boom, we have no production for golems. So this is probably going to be easier to maintain than an actual normal beaver population. Speaking of the normal beaver population, by the way, it is down to, I mean, whatever it's down to, it's 197 adults with 17 kids and 41 golems. So the actual beaver population is coming down as we focus more on, on the golems, which is what we were looking for. We were wanting to slowly replace them with robots, and so it's it's actually working, which I, I, I mean, I've only just spotted that. I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't really paying super close attention to whether or not that was happening, but it's kind of cool that it's happening. I'm going to be honest. I, I kind of enjoy that it's happening. I also like that these guys are down here building this. This is this is good. Once this comes together, we can start planting all these trees, and that's going to be fantastic. Hopefully, I mean... One thing I'll say about this is obviously water's not flowing through there, but this space over here is actually more full than it has been in a long time. We actually have water right up against this guy as well, so it's having an effect. All of what I'm doing here is definitely having an effect, and I would imagine we're probably going to see a significant change once this bit gets uh, closed up as well. Plus, of course, we can take a path around here and link these two districts, which will be great. And then if we do build a District 4 in this space, which I am strongly considering doing, that will be good as well. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark some resources here for demolition. And I do want to prioritize that because I want to just figure out a way to get up on this hill nice and uh, nice and easily. So we'll clear this out and we'll start, I guess we'll start prepping this space to be a district is, is what we'll do. We still have 43 unemployed beavers. 33 of those beavers are in district one. That is less than we had before, but we can still just move a bunch of beavers into, um, into a new district. So that's, uh, that's totally fine by me. And I'm trying to figure out what the coolest way to do this is going to be. I, I want something that looks... I want something that looks neat, to be honest. That's that's kind of where I'm at. I want a cool looking staircase, but I don't think I'm going to have the option until we get terraforming. So let's go with something. I mean, we could do a double staircase if we wanted to and just go straight up to it. But that seems kind of boring. Let's do let's do this. And then they sort of come around. We'll have this so they can like keep walking underneath. And then we'll have this right here. I guess this can be a, a double platform. And I guess that's how they get up there. That's really boring. <laughs> That's really, that's really dull as far as ways to get up into a new district go. That's really, really uninspired, but I mean, it works. So I guess that's, that's kind of the point, right? Plus, like I said, if I do this with a path, I can still, I can get underneath here and that'll let them do a whole thing. So yeah, that's going to be access to this hill, which is fine. We've got a natural staircase over here already, so that's fine. And we have a lot of resources. We have a lot of trees we can tear apart. That is going to slightly impact my tapper's shack. So I think what we'll do there is maybe not touch all of these trees, but we can chop down all of these ones. Or we can just move a bunch of resources. We have 1,000 logs in storage right now with many, many more. We have all of those maple trees to go and all of those maple trees to go. And I would hazard a guess that a lot of these guys, actually, those, 
those storage things are looking pretty full there, so maybe uh, maybe we've had a harvest over there recently. Regardless, it's really cool. I'm not going to lie. It's really cool seeing uh, just all of this actually coming together. It's really nice. Now, somewhat annoyingly, there are like two spots up here where I can place a district sensor. One of them is right here. One of them is right there. And honestly, I think this one looks better. So this is going to be district four, essentially. Now, I'm going to have to do a couple of things with this to get it working at all. Uh, so thing number one is I want to go in and basically mark this entire upper space as a tree cutting area because I need all of those pine trees to go away. And then I need to unmark this space down here because I do want to keep those pine trees. So only this upper space is going to be for tree cutting. Then I need to go in and place some lumberjack flags. So what we'll do is just put them, put one like there, I guess. And that should be fine. We can go ahead and increase the priority on that. And uh, actually, to be honest, let's let's move these a little bit because I just want them to be... I just need them to be like here. I just need like three lumberjacks right now and then two lumberjacks right there. Just enough lumberjacks that we can tear down all of these trees really nice and quickly. So what we'll do, since that's going to be District 4, is I'm going to try and be careful about this. So I want to move... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven beavers. Maybe we'll do like 10 beavers over to District 4. And we're going to let them build the lumberjack flags. They will pretty much immediately go to work as lumberjacks. They'll tear down some trees. And as soon as these guys start getting hungry, that's pretty much as soon as I'm going to go ahead. And uh, hopefully we can... Uh, wait, what are, they, what are they not connected to a district? Ooh, yeah, they need to be connected to the district center. Can I, can I just tell them to demolish resources then? So if I did like this and this, will they, they will tear down the trees, which is good. Uh, do this. And then I guess we need to kind of get a little path that sort of comes through here. So clear out those trees, clear out those and clear out those. Let me prioritize tearing out those trees. And as soon as these beavers get hungry, the plan is essentially going to be to send them back to district one. They can go grab some food. Uh, I think we do have beavers from District 1 coming up here as well, which is good. Uh, but what I'm going to need to do is bring a path sort of down and around like this. And that'll give us some beavers that can work now, which is good. And if I can go ahead and do something like that, that gives us a few more beavers. They're still not getting hungry, which is fine. They're going to. They will definitely start getting hungry. In fact, I think the safest thing to do is send them all back to District 1 now uh before they start getting hungry and then we can uh we'll be good so we'll see how that goes obviously no workers in the district that's fine not a huge deal i'm not really a hundred percent sure what this district should be i i kind of feel like it should be a a lumberjack kind of district and it's just focused on more maple trees and then we can use this district to ship the the wood out to other places we could try and industrialize it a little bit. So it's maple trees and planks and gears. And, you know, we just move all the stuff out to other districts that way. But I'm not too sure. We could make it a little farming hub, but it's really not that much space. So I don't know. I feel like industrializing it kind of makes sense. I feel like farming kind of farming kind of makes sense just simply because we have these farms down here already. I just I don't know. I don't know, and to be honest, I don't <laughs> I don't care that much. It's uh it's also mostly going to exist so I can just not deal with what 30 something 28 unemployed beavers in this district. So that's that's kind of the idea. Let's send uh 10 of them back to district four and uh we'll get them get them working to take down these trays. Hopefully nice and quickly. Hopefully they can uh they can do a good job here. And then once the area is cleared, I can put storage in here. I can put housing in here. I guess, I mean, I'm going to need a clear space to put in things like the, uh, whatever you call them. Where, where am I looking here? Is it labor, I think? Yeah, things like the distribution post and the drop-off point. Now, the drop-off point actually could go right there. But if I do that, it's going to block a potential path. So I think, honestly, a drop-off point right here 
kind of makes sense right by the entrance to the district so that the, the delivery beavers don't have to go very far. And then what we could do is, I guess, just set this up to ship water and food in there. And it's going to have to be District 1 that does it. And we have actually got two new routes that, or two routes remaining that we can set up. So let's go ahead and say one route there is going to take uh, water and the other route is going to take, I mean, it's got to be bread, right? So we'll do that. Uh, what are we delivering to District 3? We're still delivering water. I don't think we need to do that anymore. We don't need to deliver berries. We don't need to deliver logs. We don't need to deliver bread. I don't know why we've still been delivering all that stuff. And that does free us up quite nicely. So that's fine by me. That should mean that if these deliveries work regularly, we don't actually need to bring these beavers back. Although we might need to look at the distribution limits just to make sure. So water is... So that's the District 4 limit. I need the District 1 limit. So let's just head over here and double check. So District 1, uh, water is... If it's lower than like 3,000. And if they have higher than 3,000. So we'll just do it that way. Uh, bread is... If we're lower than 2,000 and they're higher... Yeah, that's fine. So we'll ship out a bunch of bread to this new district. Probably more bread than they're going to need, but... We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll hope for the best. I just need these trees to go away. That's that's kind of my priority right now. Oh, and just in time, we got a delivery of bread. We got a delivery of water, which means all of these guys are doing just fine. There is no bread in storage. There's some water in storage, which is fine. So I think what we should do is make sure that everything's marked up and it absolutely is i really do need them to tear stuff down but i think we also need to look into uh housing some beavers here so let's just look into i guess just all of the essentials at this point i would really like to put this uh this thing back here i think it would look really cool just back there on the uh on the cliff but i mean i i want something i want something that makes sense I guess, in terms of how we're going to lay this place out. So maybe we want to do a little bit of a, uh, a double platform right here. And I, well, if I do that, how many logs do we have here? A hundred? I could do some levies. I'm going to do a platform just because I think it's going to look more interesting. And I would like to do a large warehouse, but... I'm going to be honest, I don't, I don't, well, actually, no, hold on a minute. We have 400 planks in storage somewhere. Where the hell do we have 400 planks? We have 230 in District 1. So I would actually be quite confident that we could probably set up a pretty good little storage system here. And I think building this would be, I think it would be good. I think it's, it's future proofing, right? It means that if I, if I build this, I don't then have to turn around and build something else later on. So we'll build this. I'm kind of wanting to expand it a little bit. So I kind of want to put this here and this here and do, oh, I'm, I'm getting a little bit carried away. I'm going to try and be a little bit interesting with this one, I think. I'm just going to try and do something that looks cool. So I want the water tank right there. And uh, let's go ahead and bring, I guess, I guess a path over like this is fine. And then we need stairs is what we need. So I need stairs to get up there. So we'll do a little platform. And then the stairs could go here, I guess. I don't necessarily love that. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to go too crazy with this either. It, I, I don't, I don't want to get too carried away. Um, so maybe we just sort of just do the stairs there and have this sort of come around like that but i think that's cool that's a cool little storage space it's gonna look good you know it's built out over the cliff it's it's kind of cool uh it does mean that we need to send planks up here though so let's uh actually we're gonna need gears as well right planks and gears do we have a lot of gears we have 10 gears across the entire colony okay well that's gonna be a problem but uh yeah We'll add a route, comes up here. It's gonna be planks, which are right there. And it's gonna be gears, which are gonna be right there. So now let's look at the limits on district one for gears, minimum 40. Oh God, that's not gonna happen. 
All right, minimum zero. We'll just ship out whatever we got. And then for planks, it's a minimum 200. We'll do a minimum of like 150. So we can just ship out a bunch of those. And uh, eventually, this stuff will get built. It's going to take a while, but it'll get there. As long as we're moving things, it'll be fine. And then in terms of housing, I mean... Again, I kind of need them to clear some space because I don't just want to slap the housing anywhere. I kind of like the idea of maybe doing some large row houses down here. And that way it's just a massive amount of housing right at the edge looking out over all this water. It'll just look interesting. It'll look nice, right? That's kind of what we're going for. Although I realize part of the reason they're probably so slow is because they don't have storage. That would that would definitely check out. That, uh, <laughs> that would definitely check out. You know, it's amazing what a little bit of water can do for uh, a cliff top, isn't it? We got some irrigation in here, and this place actually looks kind of nice now, which I love. I also love that we have a forester up here, and the reason we've got a forester is because, of course, I want to start getting some maple trees up here. So this entire upper platform, I think, is going to be dedicated to growing maple trees. And obviously, we need to get rid of the pine trees that are here already, but with a bit of time, we can totally do that. So, hopefully this works out. Hopefully this is okay. We also have our storage going, which is great. The uh, large water tank is coming along as well, which is fantastic. And we have a clear space for some houses. So, let's just do the large row houses. I think just a large row of these will be fantastic. Although we could do the smaller ones. Inhabitants 5. So that'd be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That'd be room for 30 beavers. Or it would be 8, 16, 32, uh, 48. I don't, I don't know if we need... Uh, you know what? I'm going to go for the smaller ones. Just because I I feel like we should. I just I kind of feel like that's the, that's the vibe that I want here. So we'll go for the slightly smaller ones. We'll do this. And uh, I think we could probably get some uh, some decoration on here as well. We could get the uh, the roof. I'm not sure if we can reach it, but if we can, those are going to be kind of nice looking. So that'll be great. That's that's where the beavers can live. They'll have a roof for a bit of decoration, and that leaves us the rest of this space for industrialization or whatever it is we want to do with the rest of this space, which is fine by me. So let's just bring a little path sort of out and around this guy and then what i can do is i can get rid of these lumberjacks and i can just move the lumberjacks to say there for example we probably only need one for this entire space so we'll make it a priority and we'll just continue to plant what we need to plant get rid of what we need to get rid of so maple trees have a bit more room to go right here so we'll do this and we're pretty close. We're pretty close to clearing that uh, that cliff top of, uh, well, everything we want to clear it of, which is fantastic. This little district's kind of cool looking. I think it's going to be great. I really do. I think it's going to look really cool getting some, uh, getting something up here. I don't necessarily know what it's going to be. We could probably put an engine up here and, ooh, what if we made this a place for, well, no, we, we, hmm. I'm going to have to be careful with what I build up here because it's not going to have a super regular supply of logs unless I ship them up here, which I could do. We would then need a distribution post to ship it all back, though. And the distribution post is uh, it's this guy. And it's it's pretty big. It's It's a pretty chunky building, so I don't know that I want it. I'm going to be honest. I don't I don't love this thing. I really, I really don't. It's really not my favorite building. Although, if I put it there, it could connect. I could move the district entrance or the district gate and connect it right to the entrance of the uh, the district itself. It does slightly spoil the view of the uh, the houses, though, doesn't it? It's, it's not a great building. I don't know where I'd put it. I really, I've got nowhere else in mind. I'm also completely unre unrelated to the video. I was sitting sort of cross-legged in my chair and my legs fell asleep well my left leg fell asleep and it's extremely painful right now as it's waking up good lord <laughs> you know i've got to say i'm actually really liking district 4 a lot more than i thought i would but i think that's partly because it's quite open at the moment and it's not super industrial 
I will also say on top of that that it is going to go that way and that I've probably wasted resources by building some benches and some shrubs. But for now, it's going to be kind of a pleasant space just because it can be. Uh, I'm also thinking that, to be honest, we're probably going to have to just connect the general power grid to this place. So everywhere we'll bring power from down here. We'll probably connect everything together at some points and just use that to power this district if it happens to need it. I haven't I, I haven't settled on whether or not this is going to be an industrial space or whether or not it's just going to be somewhere that I send beavers who have nowhere else to go. It's it's bit of column A, bit of, bit of column B. I'm not really too sure. I will. Oh, man, this is nearly done. This this being nearly done has me really excited because we have a drought at the minute, obviously. But in two and a half days, that drought goes away and we might see a very different landscape in terms of where the water goes. And there we go. It is actually done, which is great. What's not great is that District 3 needs a lot of planks because obviously gears are kind of a big deal in terms of constructing these buildings, but also building beavers themselves or building golems themselves. So we need more plank production. We have the logs for it. We have 733 logs in this district with plenty more that can be harvested. So we just need to figure out how we would do that. And obviously part of that is going to be or is going to involve more power, or at least it would involve more power if I hadn't got this over here. Now, I did originally plan sort of to expand the number of charging stations that we have over at this end of things. But what I've realized is that this little engine could serve us very, very well because a lumber mill needs 50 horsepower, which is the same as these charging stations. This engine produces 400 horsepower. So in theory, I could connect four lumber mills to that engine. It would still run perfectly well. Everything would be super efficient and we would get ridiculous numbers of planks. Now, I'm not necessarily going to do that right away, but I could. And that makes me very excited because it's it's a very exciting idea. I'm going to be honest with you. It's just a very exciting idea. Uh, but I think what I'll do to get started is I'll mark these resources for demolition. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and I'm going to get a little power shaft T intersection just here. We'll go ahead and I don't need to do that, by the way, because these guys are buildings. They will just generate and produce power and carry it through. But I want the little T intersection. I like seeing the moving parts down there. I think it looks kind of cool. And essentially, the, the goal is to build a lumber mill in here. And that will double, I think. I think double. Do we have any other? Yeah, we will double the amount of uh, of plank production in uh, in District 3. So we'll swing this around. And as soon as that tree is gone, we'll build it here. And then what I can do if I want to expand this is essentially, I, I don't think levies, I don't know if levies actually transfer power. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, if they don't, that's a bit of a pain, but I can... I can make things work, I'm sure. Uh, in fact, eh, yeah, I, I, I can I can see a way to do this. Uh, so. Wait, can I see a way to do this? Yeah, yeah, I can see. A, oh, man, I'm about to do I'm about to do a thing. I'm, I'm going to do it just to demonstrate my point, because I'm, I'm doing that thing where I, I have an idea in my head of something that would be really cool but I'm not explaining what it is, which is really, it makes for a great video, I promise. Uh, basically, I'm going to get a whole bunch of these uh, lumber mills across here, except this one's going to be lower and the other ones are going to be higher because of course they are. So we need the trees to be gone, but then I also need, I guess, oh man, I need this to, I need, I need this to go away is what I need. And then I need to get a power shaft intersection right here. I need that to be built nice and quickly. And then once that's built, if that gets built, that's it's apparently too far from everything, which is a bit of a problem. Huh? How would I? I mean, I can get them in there if I get rid of a charging station, which 
I guess, I guess I'm going to have to do. I have a grand plan. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. We're going to get rid of, get rid of that charging station. We'll get this thing built. We have the logs to do it. It's not going to take long at all to, uh, to get this thing going. So there we go. It's, it's being put together. Let's go back into science, go back into charging station. And it's a bit annoying that I'm going to have to rebuild that, but we're going to have to rebuild it. So now we have this power connection, right? We're running power into the Forester, which is kind of cool. I I am starting to realize that I could have done this in a much simpler way because, again, we don't, we don't need these power shafts. I'm being an idiot is what I'm being. But anyway, I'm going to continue to be an idiot by getting rid of that guy. And I'm going to go ahead and run a high power shaft like this and then a straight power shaft like this. And then I'm going to build... Do I want to do platforms or do I want to do levees? I think I'm going to do levees. Like, uh, <laughs> like this. And that's where my workshop's going to go. Which is needlessly complicated for something like a lumber mill. But you can't deny that it looks kind of cool. And that's the point. That's, that's the entire reason for doing this is that it looks kind of cool. Uh, so... What I now need to do is figure out whether or not I can uh, I can do this in a super efficient way. So that'd be one lumber mill. That'd be two. That'd be three. That'd be four. Oh my god, it is actually going to work perfectly. All right. So what I need to do then is uh, mark all of these for demolition. So I can only do four of them, actually. Ooh. Yeah, we'll mark all of these for demolition anyway. And so I'll do one, two, and I get a little space here for something extra. Which is fine. That's that's totally fine by me. This is this is gonna look cool. It's gonna be amazing plank production. And that will hopefully translate to amazing gear production. And hopefully that will leave us with enough logs to continue to power everything around here. But what's also exciting is that with the drought just ending, we're about to see what happens to uh to the water here. I'm I'm hoping for good things. Oh, so basically we've managed to just fill all of this space with water now. That's that's about the only change that I'm seeing. The water level doesn't really look like it's higher, but it probably technically is at least a little bit higher. So I guess that's sort of a good thing. It's uh, it's it's difficult to tell. I'll be honest. It's, it's really, really difficult to tell if the water level is actually higher, but that's fine. Again, this is all, you know, part of a process towards getting a lake, essentially. So I'm not really super worried about it. Uh, what I am going to do, though, is actually go ahead and not bother filling this space in. Because if it comes down to it and we end up needing more gears, which we probably will, because plank production is probably going to go through the roof shortly, we will want a space for it. And I think this is probably going to be a good space for it. Admittedly, the gear workshop takes 120 horsepower, which we can do, actually. Two of these guys. Wait, can we do that? No, I don't think we can. Wait, yeah, we can. We can totally do that. I think. Wait, no, when this is done... Eh, no, no, we can't. We can't do that. We'll figure it out. We'll, f <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll do another engine. We'll do something. It'll be fine. Another engine here might be a little bit of overkill, but we can we can do something. It's, it's not the end of the world. We'll just keep that space for a future construction project. Uh, now, speaking of construction, I would kind of like you guys to prioritize uh, this so that I can get uh, this little irrigation thing done. We did also get uh, get these stairs done, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and mark this. This already is a tree cutting space. Interesting. Okay. In that case, let me do a lumberjack flag right here and here. Let me get a lumber or a forester. Now we do have one sort of built down there or ready, ready to be built down there. I think a forester here would be a pretty good spot. Kind of. Or maybe here. Let's, uh, hmm. I'm trying to figure out the best spot for a forester. It doesn't really matter this much. Uh, let's do, let's do here for one. Let's do here for two, I guess, and that'll cover that area really nicely. And then what we can do is go in and basically say, cover this entire space in maple trees. And that'll be great. So now we have access to this. 
That means we can fill this with water. We'll keep that irrigated. We can slowly start planting maple trees in all of this space. The lumberjacks will slowly take down the birch trees. And that'll be good for us. Uh, obviously, we do still need some foresters down here. We do still need some stairs down here as well. Uh, getting the materials for that, I guess, is a pain. Because planks, I would imagine. Yeah, we have 19 planks. So I don't think it's going to be a much of a pain to get those materials for all that much longer. Although I do think we should probably prioritize these uh, these constructions just to get them out of the way. So that we can, you know... I, basically, we need to capitalize on getting as many logs as we can. We're about to be consuming way more of them, so we might as well maintain a really good stockpile of them. So now that this golem factory is coming together and is actually working, which is kind of wild, although to be fair, we have some bodies, some heads, and some limbs in storage, so that kind of makes sense. Uh, we are starting to see some issues with District 3, specifically the fact that uh, we just don't have enough uh, golems. They keep breaking down. We just had Coghead 16 break down. We have now got 10 available jobs with 22 golems in the district, which is just really not enough. Uh, we could look at District 1, where we do, in fact, have a number of golems, which is, I guess, fair enough. Uh, it would be nice to, I guess, automatically emigrate golems to where they're needed. Although I don't know how that necessarily works. I'll be honest, I've got no idea. So I'm not going to bother doing it automatically. I'm just going to say two of them can, you know, get a shift on over to District 3 and they can do what they got to do. I've also set up a delivery route from District 2 down to District 3 for metal blocks because the scrap metal deliveries have slowed way down. So we've got a district maximum of 75. So whenever a district has 75 metal blocks, District 2 will deliver to the other district. And the reason I did that is because District 1 at one point had over 100 metal blocks. So we didn't really need more there. We needed them down here. And so that's what I've done. And that's how I've managed to get this stuff building. Uh, so hopefully we're going to start seeing some progress down this way. Hopefully all this can start coming together. We do have a forester out here and we can also pause that lumberjack because we don't need lumberjacks out there right now. All we really need, in fact, we don't even need foresters right now, to be fair. Let's uh, let's turn off the foresters down here because, again, they just they're not really needed. We can kind of send those those beavers or those golems to do other things. And uh, so that should help us out a fair bit. If we could get this finished, that would be great. We do have a few metal blocks in the district, so we should be able to. And so that means that we should, in the not too distant future, be able to uh, go ahead and regularly create beavers in or golems in District 3, which would be amazing. Uh, I also need to get another number cruncher which is totally possible because we do now have three engines in district two so i might i might look into that i'm not really too sure where i'd put it but we probably do want the extra science at this point there are a bunch of places i i'm gonna struggle to find any but there are still a bunch of places like the uh distribution posts where we don't have golems working same with the farms and i just honestly want a bunch of science so we're going to need more number crunchers. Uh, looking into it across the board, I mean, 4,000 science for an efficient mine is kind of a lot. And then you've got 700, 1,800. There's, there's a lot. We need 12,000 science for the tribute to uh, ingenuity as well, as well as 500, 1,000 there, 3,200 there. Landscaping. Let's not forget, we need an explosives factory still. Dynamite's expensive. Dirt excavators, 2,000. The dirt pile's 500. There's there's a lot of science to uh, to go around still, so we're going to need to get that done. And we also need a worker for this, uh, this engine. So, yeah, we really, really need to get some golems down here. Let's go ahead and migrate that one that's up in District 1 that's unemployed. And is he going to go to there? He absolutely is. Fantastic. So now this thing's going to be running really nicely. Uh, we can turn this control tower on as well. We are now going to be consuming something like nine science per hour. So we're only generating one. 
So what I'll do is turn this control tower off because there's not really that many beavers getting affected by it other than the ones that work at the golem assembler. So we're still going to get, you know, four science per hour, which is fine by me. These guys down here get a nice boost, which is fantastic. They do get a speed boost, which lasts for a little while, which we definitely want. So I would say District 3 is in a really, really good place now. And I would say that all of these expansions we're doing, getting District 4 going, I, I do think we're in a pretty good place. I also want to see we have seven unemployed beavers in District 1. Now, that's that's interesting. That definitely means the population is uh, is decreasing. We have four unemployed beavers in this district here as well. And we don't have any natural growth in this district. So this really is just going to be sort of a, I guess, a, a, a fallback is what it's going to be. If we have too many beavers, you know, we have eight unemployed in District 2, for example, we can just send them to District 4. The long term plan is still very much to take over everything with golems, but I need to be careful. I need to make sure that every district is set up to handle them. We're in a good place now with District 3, but for a really long time, we weren't. If we were to run out of wood, if we were to run out of logs, we wouldn't be able to recharge them. We wouldn't be able to make them and we would be kind of crippled at that point. So, yeah, we need to be careful. As long as we have a good supply of logs, we can recharge them. And then obviously, I mean, metal is kind of the big thing at this point. Metal blocks are needed for the chassis. They're needed for the heads. So metal production is kind of the big thing. Obviously, this is kind of a finite amount of scrap metal. So we need to start making our way across the map towards if I can find one. Uh, all of this would be good, but we're mostly looking for something like this. It's an underground ruin. It uh, is full of metal scraps that can be mined. And I think I'm pretty sure that's where the efficient mine comes in. So this thing will, if it can, oh, it has to consume things. I forgot about that. It consumes gears and it consumes the treated planks. So that's a lot. Uh, and it will produce three scrap per hour. If we throw dynamite in there, it'll produce six scrap per hour. So we need to get a district on that island, essentially is is what i'm thinking we need a district there and that will help us out greatly unless there happens to be somewhere that i could mine over here but i i kind of doubt it i've been down this way quite a bit and not seen anything we have some scrap there i thought there was a mine or a mineable spot up here yeah and all this all this space so i guess that would be an option as well not a hundred percent sure how we would pull that off but I think maybe that's something we'll have to look into. We do have access to this upper level now, so we could, we could actually found a district up here. We absolutely could. We do, we do, you know, we have the natural stairs, so I could found a district here, move a bunch of resources up there. And I think that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to found a really industrial district here that deals with a lot of mining and smelting. So maybe we should found... Oh, now hold on a second. Can I? I could flood this entire space. I'd need to block it off. I need to build something here, but I could flood this and use that as a source of water. But what I'm kind of thinking is why don't we just move a bunch of golems up here? I would need way more golems, but I could potentially do it and have the golems just run the entire thing. We'd need a bunch of engines, although we have the river, so we could use that for power as well. Eh. I think we need an industrial district up here. I do. It's completely possible as well now that we have access to this upper uh, level. So let's build a district center, I guess, is what we'll do. We can go. Oh, it would look really cool right there, wouldn't it? It, it would look kind of cool right there. So, yeah, we're going to build a district center. And I kind of realize we can we can plan something here, can't we? So we'll do this. Uh, we'll plan for some stairs. I know we have the natural ones, but we'll plan for those. And I guess we don't really need residential spaces. We just need to be able to handle charging uh, golems. So charging stations, we can go for, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Maybe. 
maybe four of them would be a better idea. We'll do we'll do four on each side, right? So we'll do we'll do eight uh, charging stations there. If we go to metal, we're gonna need smelters, which are I mean they're obviously quite important. So we'll do this and this, and then we'll bring some paths sort of across the front here, and then powering these guys. I mean that's that's sort of the next thing. So I'm gonna leave a gap at the back. And that's where we can sort of bring the power in. And I guess in terms of powering them, it's going to be it's going to be engines, right? So we could do an engine sort of here and there, I suppose. I, I guess that kind of works. It would be better if it was a little neater. This really isn't a good layout. I'm probably going to redo this, but this will at least give you an idea of, of what I'm thinking for this whole thing. Uh, so that's a couple of smelters. That's fine. This isn't actually going to be enough power. I should probably measure this. So I need 200 and 200. So one of these guys... Wait, is that enough? So hold on. That's 800 right there. That is actually enough. That is exactly what we would need for this entire setup. Oh. Oh, in that case, hold on. There's a much better way to do this. Because one engine will power one little, little set right there. What I can do is just uh, clear out this section of path and that section of path go to power go to engine and do one and two and that's it that's that's gonna power each little set right there it's a bit nasty looking but that's kind of what i'm thinking for the space i think that'll be pretty good uh, and then in terms of surrounding the district sensor let's go ahead and grab a couple of levies just to sort of square this off a little bit and uh yeah, that's, that's how we can get up and down. We'll go ahead and put some stairs, say, here and here and there. And we'll just run uh, some paths around the district sensor. And that's going to be kind of an idea for our super industrial district. Now, obviously, we're going to need wood to fuel these guys. So we'll need to get some irrigation. We'll need some lumberjacks. We'll need to get some deliveries going this way as well. This is going to be a bit of a process, but... I think this will be pretty cool. So let's just very quickly uh, look at getting a forester out here. I'm guessing, uh, honestly, that's probably a good spot for it. I would like symmetry. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of wanting some symmetry though. So let's do, I guess this. No, I can't do that actually. Uh, let's do this and this. It's not going to be perfectly symmetrical because obviously we have the issue of the, the buildings themselves are not symmetrical, but you get the idea. It's... Oh, that's actually really bothering me. That's really bothering me. Never mind. We're not going to go for symmetry on those. We'll just go ahead and put a... Uh, we'll put a forester, I guess, there for one. And this guy... I mean, he could go way out there. Could go way up there. I'm thinking way up there is fine. So that'll be a couple of foresters that can give us everything we'll need in terms of planting trees in this space. Uh, we're going to need lumberjacks. So what we'll do for those is, I guess, one right there and then one right out here. And that'll be perfect coverage. And then obviously irrigation is kind of a thing. We'll need some irrigation out here. We'll need some irrigation down at the bottom right as well. Uh, but once that's done, we can get a bunch of trees growing out here. I think what I might even try and do is send some beavers out to plant the trees. And hopefully we can get those to grow before we even establish the district itself. So send the beavers out, plant the trees, bring the beavers back. And then we can start moving golems out here, hopefully, once the trees have grown. So that would be my idea. Obviously, we'd need uh, metal and gears and scrap metal and planks and all that stuff to get this going. But I, I think this will be huge. And to celebrate my genius, I'm going to get the efficient mine. So this thing is basically going to live there. That's that's where the efficient mine's going to go. And we'll also need explosives. That's that's a thing to, uh, to make this thing super efficient. But... Uh, that's that's kind of the goal basically is uh, get explosives on this now what do i actually need for explosives that's something i haven't uh haven't been paying attention to so an explosives factory is only 400 science and it's three paper for one explosive so we're finally gonna have a purpose for uh for explosives which is nice uh this thing does need to be powered though 
so I mean it only takes 150 I think what we'll do for this guy is I mean I can put it right here I guess so we'll put it right there we'll go ahead and grab a few more golem charging stations we'll put them along here we'll bring ourselves a path up like this across like this and we'll just slap another we'll slap another engine in there really so we'll use engines to sort of power each section yeah the symmetry's gone but that i think is going to be awesome so it's going to take a while to build that but that's that's going to be a good district i think as for everything else how many golems we got we got two that are unemployed and they're both in district one so let's migrate those golems to district three and that should leave us with two unfulfilled golem jobs which is okay by me they still haven't built these stairs annoyingly i get the feeling they might be out of range no they're not they're just lazy i think uh they are working on this as well which is pretty cool i don't think they'll manage to build this entire thing but it is cool that they're doing it and i also forgot that i turned off some of the uh some of the lumber mills down there that's fine as well honestly i'm just kind of glad that we're we're building golems here i'm i'm happy enough with that i i think we've made some really really cool progress today and so i think we will leave it there for today thank you so much for watching everybody it's been an absolute pleasure as always and as always i'll see you next time Bye bye